Hey guys, back here with another video, and um, for this video I'll be drawing something for Halloween, something a little different, some kind of a jack-o'-lantern demon monster. Not sure really what it is, but it looks spooky, and uh, just in time for Halloween. So in this video I'll start off with some regular pen and ink, and a regular brush. This brush is a pretty old brush, and um, it's kind of really worn out. So it causes really cool looking um, textures whenever I go bold with the lines. And that's why here you see the outlines I'm doing here, they're pretty bold. And if there's any mistakes, I'll just fix them towards the end. But uh, all I'm doing is just lining everything up, getting that line work in, varying some of the line weights, depending on um, the shape and where it is. But um, overall, like I try to go really heavy with the lines, make sure they're dark, you know, because um, I feel like it's when the lines are like that, it gives more of a punch to the image. It's kind of um, very bold. And for this one, since it, I'm trying to make it look scary, you know, it, uh, you know, how do I say it? It's like it's more contrast. So I kind of like that makes it pop out more. And yeah, uh. Here you could see like, I'm going in first with the brush just to make sure I block in all the big shadows. And then after I do that, I'm gonna go in with the G pen. So the G pen is the dip one, the one you just dip into the ink and it's got that the pointy um, tip where you have to press down to vary the lines. But uh, here you can just see, I'm just trying to make sure to keep the contrast high and try to get interesting shapes out of the brush trying to make sure that the that the shapes are clear right that the figure and the objects in this drawing look clear enough well the one thing i would probably change with this drawing is um the way he's posed but overall i think it turned out yeah it turned out all right but if i were to change the pose i would make sure that that hand in the front was a little bit closer to himself so it doesn't look like the, so it looks like the tongue and the, the cleaver are kind of closer together. Here I'm trying to, you could see that the, I'm trying to add shadows underneath that cleaver, like, so it could create like an atmosphere behind it. So it looks like, um, it stands out more. It looks like it's closer to the viewer when they look at the paper. Cause if I were to just shade in the cleaver too, you know, and not make it stark like that, where it stands out because it's white and the background is darker, it would look like it's kind of part of the, the body of the jack-o'-lantern. You want to make sure that when you're drawing things, you gotta give this feel of atmosphere. Gotta make sure that it's, um, things stand out and that's things you could tell where they are in the drawing. Like, you gotta think about things in a 3D atmospheric type of lens, you know? You gotta make sure that you could, uh, well, yeah, here you could see a close up of the brush just passed by, but see, it's very frayed and it's very, um, beat up. But, uh, that's because it's, you know, it's a pretty old brush. I don't think I wash it often. I should take care of the brushes more. So now here's the G pen and um, I pretty much just use this to do all the detailing and for the lines I do, I make sure that they're like, they're not just regular straight lines. You got to make sure there's some type of like, not calligraphy, but it's like a very, um, how do I explain it? The lines take the form of the shape that you're drawing them on. So if the shape is kind of curved, it's going to be more of a curved like it's going to be a line that kind of goes around the shape, you know? It's not going to be a line that's just straight. You, you want to make sure that it adds to the shape of whatever you're drawing it on. You want to keep the lines interesting. You see how the lines curve and stuff, you know? They're not always just straight, boring lines. So it's whatever I didn't add rendering to with the brush. 
if the rendering is small i go in and i do it with a g-pen if the rendering can be done with a big tool and you know a big shadow then i'll use the brush no problem here you could see me going in for the teeth with this because I, I was too afraid to render in the teeth with the brush because i think that would have caused a mess the blood texture was very hard to do with the g-pen i should have used the brush but sometimes I feel like when I flip the G-Pen over and I just smear it on the paper, it creates these random textures, which is cool for like a splatter effect or like a mess effect. You know, it's pretty cool. Here I'm trying to add in like effects for the hands, making them as like gritty as possible. And you know how like hands will have like veins on them and stuff? And so here it's kind of like I feel like it looks more like vines rather than veins. So I kind of like lean in that direction more. But yeah, I'm adding here more cross hatching to the things that are, um, that I don't want to black out completely. So I gave them these textured shadows. Yeah, here you can see I'm just adding more of that gritty texture to the hands, making sure that they look like they're viney, you know? Like he's made out of a, he's made out of like plant vines or something. The one thing I really like about the G-Pen is that you can really vary the line widths. And um, you can even draw with it without pressing too hard. So that's the cool thing. So you get really thin lines. And that's why I like using it after the brush. I don't really like using it for outlining things. I, I like using it more for, um, you know, uh, doing small details and small small detailing and small rendering of certain areas in the in the drawing. And now I move on to the background. I pretty much just drew in some fast branches with the uh, with the pencil. And um, I think it was a. I'm not sure if it was a wax pencil. No, I think I'm going to do that later. But right now I'm just adding in some ink. And sometimes when you're blotching it around like this, right, it leaves openings. And it could look like it's light peeking through the tree, the canopy. You know, that's by the tree, made by the trees. So it gives like a cool effect. You begin to see it where it leaves like white spots. I think I'm going to mess it up, kind of. And then have to do it again. But at this point, I try to tape it down because I feel like if I didn't tape it down, the paper will just curl up because of the water. But yeah, here you see that that's the wax. Uh, I think it's called a. Uh, I forgot the kind of pen it's called. The pencil is called. It's like a wax pencil. It's uh, it's a Sharpie brand one, and I just use it to make the branches in the background. And the cool thing about the wax pencil is that. Once you go over it with like water or something, you could still kind of see it because you know, you can't put water on top of wax. But yeah, I try to keep the rendering not too, um, what's it called? Too tight. I want to make it loose so it could like not be too distracting from the jack-o'-lantern guy that's in the front. Yeah, and now I add some shadows to his outline just to make his face pop out more. Makes it look, uh, makes it look more interesting like this. I don't want it to be too flat. That's why I wanted to add in the background and, you know, all this extra rendering and stuff. I rarely draw stuff without backgrounds just because of how boring it looks. Like I always like to add a background to stuff just cause it looks cooler. And since I used to paint a lot back then, I really liked, like, I mean, I used to watch a lot of Bob Ross. <laughs> and he always, like, I learned really how to paint from that guy. Like, the beginning, the beginner phase, you know, like, how to draw the landscapes and stuff. And so, like, whenever I get a chance, whatever I learned from, like, drawing landscapes, I like to apply it to, like, small drawings like these. Like, this background is not tight at all. It's some, like, 
pretty simple um, textures and painting techniques, you know. Yeah, here I just go in with some acrylic paint just to make certain things stand out more. And you saw how I applied it here to that tongue and the and the the bone cleaver, you know. And here I'm adding it to the hand because the hand is the closest thing to the viewer. And so I'm adding the white to it just to make it pop out more. So it's the first thing you see like when you look so it feels like it's closer to you. And you see how when you put on the veins and the vines and those on that hand, it begins to stand out more. So it gives like a cool effect. I wasn't sure what I was planning here because I was like thinking maybe he could be have like a some kind of a fiery effect coming out of his eyes or his mouth. But I felt like that would be too much, so I just stopped there. Now I add more highlights around the wrinkles of the face to make it pop out more and be more uh, gnarly, you know. Looks pretty cool. This this acrylic paint here, um, I should have waited for the ink underneath to dry completely along with the paper. And so when I go in with the acrylic, sometimes it'll gray up a little bit, you know, some of the ink will leach into the acrylic paint. And that's not good. But uh, after I went with this layer of acrylic, I uh, I used some of the PH Martin bleed proof uh, white paint and uh, I added some more highlights to it. Oh, yeah, here I go in again with the wax pen and uh, yeah, I really like this effect on the teeth that made it look like it's it actually looked scarier after, so that was pretty cool. It gave it like more of a standout effect because the contrast of how bright the mouth is to how dark the teeth were. So you could see the teeth stand out as being more sharper than before. And that's pretty much it. But um, after it, you could see the final one where I used more, um, more acrylic paint and I darkened some of the shadows more. But uh, thanks for watching, and you know, uh, if you got any questions, leave them below, and like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween. Later.